um, today I'm using the charger, the new Hellcat charger, uh, except for it's been detuned, or well, it's been, it's been, I've taken power out of it. Um, hold on, I'm trying to find, there it is, up there, escapes. <laughs> Mm, let's go to the 2019 selections, which, by the way, I personally like the 2019 selections. I think they did very good um, with these particular skate landscapes. Um, so I like the new Hellcat chargers, but the reason why I detuned it is because for it to be a proper... Um, in my opinion, a proper road car, a detuned Hellcat or a depowered Hellcat would work better, if that makes sense, for like corners and stuff, or more aerodynamics. Mm. Sorry. I apologize. I got sidetracked. Ah, son of a bitch. Forgive me. I'm not paying attention to the screen right now, and I apologize. No, it's bad. It's bad. It's bad etiquette. It's bad YouTuber etiquette. I apologize. Please forgive me. But, um... I like the 2019 landscapes because it's one of the only Gran Turismo's that I've had that has like has the Yosemite <laughs> National Park, which is my favorite national park in the United States. And yes, I'm biased because I'm from California. Sue me. But I mean, come on, look at that. In California, people don't expect. Well, everyone thinks when you th when you talk about California, everybody ex thinks of L.A. But this is Yosemite National Park up in the mountains where the redwood trees are and sequoias, like mo uh, near, closer to San Francisco than Los Angeles, but a lot higher in elevation. Um, the roads are nice, very nice during the summer. They're very windy uh, during the winter time. It's they're they're still very nice to drive, but they're frozen in certain spots. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to drive during the summertime in Yosemite, but I have driven in like weather like this, but not in a Hellcat Charger in uh, 2000, what year? The 2008 Nissan Altima two-door. Uh, me and my sister rented it, and we went to Yosemite National Park with a, uh, a group of friends of ours that were that are from the same the same nationality as us. And it it was I I I, th I thought it was fun. I'm gonna turn the wheels this way. Kind of like move it a little bit more. Wait, no. Where should I put this? Okay, mm. I need to. There we go. I'll just move it out of the way. Let's move the camera to the side. Bring the car out this way. Make it park in like that. A little bit more. There we go. Kind of get it to like right there. Um, for right now, I like I like the way this I like the front end of this vehicle a lot. I think it's one of the better looking Chryslers that have come out of Chrysler in the past two decades. Except I, I still believe that the 2010 Dodge Charger SRT8 Super V is the best looking Charger that has come out of the most the modern day resurrection of the Chargers. Um, actually, you know what's funny is that speaking of the modern day Chargers and all that stuff, I my final project in high school was actually the Dodge Charger. <laughs> Um, rotate 180 degrees. I don't like, I don't like the rear tail lights. I'm sorry. 
I don't like the rear tail lights. I don't like how dodge darty they are. That's where I think they messed up with it. I like the body lines of the vehicle itself. Like, it still has kind of like that whole silhouette of it. Of the, the model that came before because it essentially... No, no, I think this is a I think this is a new platform for the char for the chargers that came out. Um, my my final project was in 2014, so this car was in wasn't wasn't redesigned yet. I mean, I can still see the lines from the 2015 Charger that was inside of the Fast in the Fast Five movie, the 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 police cars. Um, Obviously, uh, obviously more rounded, especially right there. Hold on, let me turn off the lights. Especially right, like right there, where you can see more of the bend, where it comes out of the corner underneath the, the side mirror. Whereas the Charger from 2014, it wasn't so round and aerodynamic. <laughs> um. If you guys seen the first episode, I do have a cat and I do have a dog who's ripping her blanket right now on the floor. Um, but I figure this is a better way to get the vehicles looked at. I put TE TE thirty sevens on because I thought they looked better than the the spider webby SRT Hellcat wheels they have on it. I uh, carbon fiber hood. It's there. It's just livery. It's not actually carbon fiber. I don't. They don't let me do that kind of stuff. They allow me to t paint certain things, like the ground effects, the wheels, the hood, and the the tail. But I want. I I can't. I don't remember if I painted the tail or not. But I like this car. I do like it in comparison to um, the majority of cars on the road nowadays. Mainly because of the fact I feel like this. Chrysler tried. Chrysler tried their damnedest to get a car that pe everyone would like, even the people who don't want the 707 horsepower monsters. Um, I personally think that to that, like I said earlier, I think the 2010 is the better one. As far as looks wise, um, I think the chassis is a little bit easier to work with, mainly because they've made so many of them, and that like they've worked on them so often as of recent years, um, that it's kind of like I, I know how they react to stuff. I heard the new. I've never driven a Hellcat. Um, I've heard the new base model ones. Were nicer to drive as far as comfort in comparison to the 2014 and the 2010 model, or the 2000, 2008, 2010, 2014, 2018 uh, models, or 17 models. Um, but the 17 model ends up being the smoothest ride, which I can attest to. I guess I guess they're smoother. They're not. They're, they still feel boaty and they still feel like a big E-class Mercedes. But in, with an American badge on it, which that's, that's essentially what there are. It's not bad. It makes it easier for me because I am a Mercedes mechanic. So it may, like there's it makes it easier to understand the geometry of this car, and the geometry to drive it. So I just have to drive it like an E-Class, like a big E55 2010 E55 E-Class. Like it's. Mm, No filter. Actually, yeah, let's let's see if I can Okay, advanced key lights off. No, key lights on. Uh driver on. No, no driver. What? What did I just do? Uh okay, I guess. Light sensitivity, let's do 1.25. Turn the grid off. No, I don't want to play. 
play with all the resolution. I want to put a film on this. Uh, no. Okay, what does the film look like with monochrome? I actually kind of like that a little bit better. No, uh, okay, so I guess that doesn't do anything. Oh, right, okay, so I'm gonna take this off. <laughs> That's what I wanted was down here. Oh, oops. Keep fucking with it. Let me zoom out. It's background. No. So what does it look like with? No, that looks dark as fuck. Let's do that. Make it like a like a sunny day up in the mountain. Clear, where's clear, where does clear skies? I, I can't. No. What was? I do, lo-fi is my 100% favorite filter for this because it shows more detail. I'm gonna keep the lo-fi filter. And if I, I'm not fucking with that. Nope. It's color cast correction. No, I'm leaving that over. No, damn it, there we go. Hmm. Okay, I'm leaving it like that. Let's see what it looks like. I like it. Cool. Let's go race this thing. So my favorite my favorite character in Supernatural is Crowley. <laughs> I probably spelled his name wrong. I apologize. Uh, made during during no let's do episode two. By the way, that noise that you hear is my dog ripping her toys apart. While the cat plays with her tail. I really like to I really do like that picture. Sorry, that's I got a text message. I like it. Okay, let's get out of here. No, I'm not, I mean, I if you guys want, just put in the comments what cars you guys want me to end up driving. Um, I in the first episode I drove the O2 Viper because I've driven the O2 Viper before so I remember how how it felt I didn't drive it on a racetrack but I remember how I was allowed to be stupid in it because a friend of mine owned it but anyway um, I wasn't allowed to be idiotic but there are all the cars that I essentially am going to end up I'm going to do my best to drive in this are cars that I've driven in real life whether it be like obviously nowhere near as expensive versions of these cars but i do remember like the geometry of how the cars turned and stuff like that for example these two civics the civic and the integra i was thinking about doing an, uh, doing a few episodes of the integra the civic 
and the ST because I've owned an ST and I do remember the way I used to take it in the canyons and I loved it. Um, when I was in Chile, I got to drive in, in a Renault Sport. Uh, I've driven Mustang. I've driven a few new Mustangs. Um, I've driven a M4 BMW. I've driven a Golf. It's not obvious. It's not the GTI Golf, but I've driven a Golf of the same year. Um, I've driven one of these in 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 Japan. I've driven one of those when I was in Sasebo. Um, I've driven a ton of. 350Zs in my years of being a mechanic both in and out of the Navy um, these Suzuki Swifts were actually pretty cool pretty nice they're 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 good platforms to build off-road cars on like rally cars um, I've gotten to sit in a Diablo I've never gotten to drive one I've always wanted to drive one working at Mercedes I've driven SN SLS Mercedes to test drive them for like customers because they hear a noise or whatever uh, I've never driven an R34 GTR, but I have driven a R34 Skyline base model four-door. Never ridden in a Mark IV Supra, never driven a Mark IV Supra, uh, but I do have a friend who owns one. Um, but he's a Xbox guy, so he wouldn't want to get... Gran Turismo just to do streams and stuff like that. That would just for one episode. I doubt he'd do it. Um, I've driven the uh, I've driven the GT Mercedes GT. I've never driven the AMG GT. Uh, from what I hear, they're two two completely different cars. I've driven the Evo Ten. I've driven the Evo Four. Or that's not four. Yeah, that's the Evo 4. I'm stupid. That's the Evo 4. I've driven the Evo 4 because my aunt used to own one. Uh, these are all... I. <laughs> there's 168 cars I believe I have. Mm -hmm. I sold a few uh, before a few episodes ago. I've driven an FC's, uh, FC RX-7s. I've driven FD RX-7s. I've driven Challengers as a uh, as a mechanic for Fred's Automotive and Vista. Uh, I've driven. <laughs> I've never driven the 22B, but I have driven the uh, the Subaru. I forgot what year this is. The 99, the 98 Subaru uh, Impreza's. I like them. I've driven the S2Ks, which honestly I think the gears are too long. I I don't agree with a lot. I don't agree a lot with Jason Camisa on a lot of things. But I do agree with the fact that the gears in the S2K are too long. Um, I don't like the M3 E30, but I, I have driven them, and they are pretty easy. Like, anyone can get in one and drive one. They're not that hard. Um, I've, I used to own an E46. I've never the M3, but I have owned an E46. Um, I had a stepdad that used to have a Tundra, so I remember how they feel. I've driven a fuck ton of Raptors, or not Raptors, but like F-150s from every single year they've ever came out. Um, so it's 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 not that hard to remember how these ride. Never driven a Ford GT, but I did have a technician in a stall next to me that did inspect one for a customer. Um, I have driven pretty harshly the GT 86s. I don't like them. I just, I just don't. There's, there, I just, there, I can't find honest. The reason, there's too many reasons to point out why I don't like them. Um, <laughs> I have driven the AE 86, and that's probably why. Uh, the noise is completely. It's the wrong noise coming out of that car. Um, I have. Worked on a few 69 Camaros, um, and I have driven them pretty hard too. So I, I, I've set this one up. I've modified this one myself. So it, this one's set up from the way I drive that car. Um, obviously modified suspension, gearboxes, and everything like that. So this is nowhere near 1969. Um, I my personal favorite, the Mark IV Supra. I have driven. I do like them. 
I like how they look from the inside. I like how they feel for the for the driver, and I like how it's so it's it's driver oriented. Um, <laughs> I have driven Fiat 500s working for a Dodge. Uh, they were nice. I I believe it or not, like they're actually they're decent. They're okay cars. Uh, I would never own one, but if it was a rental car and that's all they had, I I wouldn't mind. Um, GTOs, G, uh, 3000 GT in the United States. Uh, the VR4s, I've never driven, but I have driven a twin turbo version that was not all wheel drive. Um, it, it was custom twin turbo from a friend of mine. I have driven the Abarth. Uh, is it the is it Abarth? Uh, correct me in the comments, please. Abarth uh, 500. I have driven them. They are pretty nice. I'm going to be 100% honest. They're pretty nice. Uh, I have driven both this, the EK Civics, well, obviously in the game, but like in real life, I've driven the EK9 Civics. They're not, they're, they're nice. I like them for, as far as Honda goes, I think that size for, for as far as hatchback for Honda, I think that one was the better size as far as practicality goes. But I still think the EM1 Civic is the better of the two body styles. Performance-wise, I disagree 100% with that statement where the EK9 beats the the EM1 SI. But as far as looks and practicality, I like the EM1. I think they should have put. I think they should have made an EM1 Type R. I'm not sure if they did or not. I know in the United States they didn't, because we didn't even get the hatchback Type R. Um, the Sylvia K in the United States, this is the 240SX. I, I like them. I like the way they drive. They're nice. Uh, I like how tail happy they are. And I like if they're suspend, if they're set up right, how good they grip. Um, in Chile, I have driven some Peugeots. I have driven some Renaults. Uh, I have driven some Minis. Um... I haven't dabbled with Jaguars. I haven't messed with Lancias or Lancia. Um, I've never driven the Magon or the Mac or the Magnet or whatever they're called. Yeah, M Magner, I think. I don't remember how to say it. Um, I have driven Subarus of essentially every year they were made. I like personally the 2001 of the way it looks from the outside on the inside and how they feel. Uh, I have driven 67, well this is 65, 65 to 67 Fastback Mustangs I have driven but I've never driven a GT350. Um, like at the mechanic, the next stall, one of the stalls, like two, three, two, three, two or three stalls to where I was at got to work on one. But I I did I never did. Uh, I do personally like the E90 M3s. That's probably my favorite e, uh, M3 iteration. I know technically turned into an M5. It's not long no longer an M3 because it's a V8. I don't care. I think it looks better and I think it sounds better and I think it drives better. Uh, it may be more like not in tune with the driver and maybe feel a little bit more numb the E40 than the E46 but for as far as a BMW I kind of like that if I'm going to be quite honest I kind of like the fact because BMW, in my opinion I don't when I think of BMW I don't think of performance car I think of luxury sedan so when it comes to BMW I think the E90 M3 hit it the best i mean the e46 is obviously going to be a monster and it's it's better for like racer enthusiasts but as some as someone like me who takes stuff literally then that i everything in life i take literally and i yeah um the e90 m3 i feel like is the best m3 that has been made in my personal opinion but let's get back to driving the challenger so, or Challenger, Charger. I'm actually kind of upset they didn't have the Challenger in the game, but I kind of understand why they choose the ch they chose the Charger, because it has a higher top speed. And um, Gran Turismo is like, 
Gran Turismo really panders to the experience of driving. So they have like the Tokyo Expressway. Um, the uh, so I can't remember how to say that. Sukuba Sukuba Circuit. I think it's how we, how it's pronounced. Uh, Suzuka Circuit. I'm actually I'm gonna take the challenge. I'm gonna take the charger on Suzuka Circuit for sure. Um, I did the Viper on Cirque du Sark last time. I'm saving the Nurburgring for for one definitely special one. I'm gonna test the two Hondas on that one. Um, I don't know what I'll do for Spa. Okay, let's do this. Like I said, this charger has had power pulled from it. I forgot how much power I pulled from it, but I've pulled power from it. Mainly because of the fact that I don't have mm, as much downforce as I would like. I don't, I don't like. I don't have the stock car wing. <laughs> like I don't have the stock car spoiler on the back, so like I can't, I, I can't adjust it up or down. So it doesn't give me the option to give it downforce. So I don't. And like my gripe in the first episode, I don't like how this doesn't. I like Gran Turismo 5. Like I got, I love Gran Turismo 4, but I like Gran Turismo 5 in the way that they allowed you to do stuff to the vehicle. Um, I kind of bums me out that they didn't do that to sport. But car settings. So I have it at 650 horsepower. So I, so essentially 92% of the horsepower available that I have for the vehicle. Uh, the max, the most I'm allowed to put on is 23% over the max, over the 100% horsepower, which is 869 horsepower, 799.7 foot-pounds of torque at 3,840 pounds. Uh, yeah, pounds? Pounds. Yes, pounds. Uh, I've taken, I've actually, I've added weight. I've taken, I've removed horsepower. I've added, why did I, no, six, 650. Uh, I've removed, I've removed power and I've added weight. I, the reason for that is I feel like this vehicle, because of how big it is, for it to go around corners properly, I think I would need more weight. And this is how I set up the suspension on this car. Mainly because of the fact it gives me the best stability, gives me the best, oh, wait, hold on. No, I'm gonna leave it like that. It gives me the best stability, gives me the best acceleration I possibly can. It gives me the best braking and cornering and my top speed I've actually reduced. I My top speed used to be uh, 236 with, uh, 886 horsepower. Uh, if you guys want to see that top speed run of the char the, the char a modified charger, please put down in the comments. But let's do this. decent run I think I need to tune this a little bit uh, 
I think I need to take away. Take me to the softer springs. Do, yeah, 190. Move. I'm gonna dump this down. I'm gonna dump, I'm not gonna dump the back end. I'm just gonna drop a little bit. Okay, let's see if this works.
apologize about that. My mother had called me and told me something important. She was ranting about something that was No, but as I'm like I'm as I'm sitting here just like throwing this thing around, like I actually I like I I like the how much you can see like the front end fold around. I like the I like I like how they I I'll be honest I like the way they set this car up. Maybe I'll just throw up the. Maybe I'll just throw up the replay. I'll see how it looks from the outside. So those those laps that I actually got good times on, I actually did do I actually did my best on when I wasn't talking and I had the microphone unplugged, mainly because my mother called me. Yeah, my ringtone is the Dixie. Now I overshot the first lap because it's been a while since I've actually had this game installed into my console, mainly because of the fact that I had to play some games that I was playing and now that I'm not playing that one much, I decided to do this series, I'm going to start using this one more often. I like the way it looks as it goes around corners, like it, it's, it's as if the charger really that this is where the charger excels at is things about this like I think this is where the charger really excels whereas the challenger is more of a straight line drag race like no nonsense like foot like just money now pinks on the on the floor right now let's do this I think that's more what I, I see the challenger do where I see I see the charger even the ones from the 70s like the 60 68 7 68 69 70 71 72 73 74 like I think all of those body styles even even the ones that look like the cars from Cordobas like I even those I feel like as if like would be great road course cars and I feel like they should have been inside of inside of stock car racing a lot sooner than they were like and for a lot longer than they were um, but I understand like money and stuff like that and teams <laughs> oh goodness gracious um, something almost fell now if you guys see some vi some episodes some videos back in uh, some broadcasts or some live streams back you'll end up seeing uh, one that I actually did sign a contract with Dodge and it was a pretty long broadcast are pretty, yeah, well, I mean, that's how that's what it says on my console, so I'm just gonna call them broadcast. Uh, it was a pretty long broadcast, so I think it was like about an hour, maybe maybe an hour and a half. Uh, but I ended up signing a, a deal with Dodge in the online online here on on Gran Turismo Sport to drive their GT3 and GT4 parts, and I just ended up unfortunately didn't have the time. Like I didn't know what I was doing, and if I actually like, if I wasn't essential during COVID, I would have done it. Unfortunately, I was essential. I didn't have like an actual time set up that I was doing it. Like I was actually looking at the time to actually set it aside. To do it. But I figured this is a good way I can dips would be at and things like that because this is what I, this is, I, I would like to do this not well, I mean, I'd like to do YouTube videos and drive and, and of me driving the simulator and stuff like that but I mean specifically like what I want to do is drive cars either stock car racing or road course racing so like I, I'm, I'm going to do I'm going to start 
I'm gonna start like working towards doing actually that and getting my SCCA license. So I can actually start doing that professionally, which is what is my dream. And then eventually either be on road course cars like this in the Suzuka circuit or driving for NASCAR in the pickup truck series. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm from the United States, so I grew up in, I grew up in California. Like, Kevin Harvick and Ricky Hendrick, or Ricky Hendrick, Kevin Harvick and Jimmy Johnson came out of California. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, okay, I'm Bakersfield. Like, I would like to do that. That'd be amazing. Figure the best way to do it is start off with two minutes across the two minutes across. I think I see him back to the nation down the first. It's kinda of obvious I'm not really used to the car yet and I haven't set it up on I, I haven't set it up hundred percent yet, but I don't think it is. There's some other, th there's some things I can improve, for example, I can improve the, the LSD, I can get, like, tune it a little bit better, but this is what, the, like, I, th I think the, I think the Charger actually should be the road course car, I think it's the one that should have been the Grand Tour, like, they should make a Grand Tour version of this Hellcat. I know they have the GT, which is a V6, like, all the drive. But what it, the Grand Touring is essentially like driving across long distances, like 20 gallon tanks, big V8s, or not big V8s, small V8s, high revving, high revving V8s, high revving inline sixes. Oh, I guess, I guess, I guess V6s is, is a good way to go too. If they're boosted. I think it would be better if they were if they, if they were I think Dodge should come back out with the leaning tower of power and modernize it and have it like a hybrid system. Just redesign the power that the, the leaning tower or the four liter high output and then just add a hybrid system to it and just have it like uh, anything under 35 miles an hour is just hybrid system. And it just like it, it, it sounds like the Jetsons, <laughs> or no, not the Jetsons, or like something like well, Toyota has this like this whole sound that they have whenever you watch, whenever you hear a hybrid Toyota, that's the sound that you'll end up hearing. It's kind of weird, but I guess it's because of the fact that like more and more, like it's 60 or 70 percent of more people are hit by electric cars and, and hybrids because of the fact that you can't hear them. So, it's a better idea to just like add noises to it. Whether it be like a custom noise or whatever. But as soon as you hit highway speeds like 45 and over, that's where I think the, the gas engine should come on. Like as soon as you hit 40 miles an hour, the gas engine should just like 20, or 25, 25, 30. 30 miles an hour is when the gas engine should turn on. Because in California, that's when they do the smart test. They, they, they do the speed at 25, 35, and 55. It's because 55 is highway speeds, 35 is around town, and 25 is like maximum public area, or private residential area. So Dodge, so Dodge is going to stop making the Charger and the Challenger in 2024 and go full electric. So what I'm thinking, so what I'm thinking is that a good way to introduce that into the new market, which i.e. me as a Dodge, as a Dodge, as a prior Dodge mechanic and, and a giant Dodge enthusiast, 
um, I believe that it would be uh, easier. It would be easier for the public to accept the whole hybrid the world thing if it was more beneficial for gas mileage for us car enthusiasts. Like for example, let's take let's take. Uh, fuck it. Let's take the charge. Let's take the Challenger, for example. And yes, I've tuned this one as well. This one is tuned as well. I forgot what track I tuned it for. But I have to tune this as well. No, I'm not going to show the build sheet. I'm going to do this one. Nope. Tokyo Expressway and do a basic track. A real easy one. A swing for the fences, everyone. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, this this episode's all about the Charger, the, the Hellcat. Or like I have or also known as the Fat Cat. I believe that the Charger is the fat cat of the two. It's the fat twin. Longer, wider. I believe it's a I believe it's a little bit wider. Or no, I think the the try it challenger because it has a wide body, I believe. Yeah. Here we go.
like to take around the road.
Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna use the Tokyo Expressway as a as a tester for my stuff now. Okay, so on the screen that you guys are looking at, you guys can see it better, obviously. But my first lap was the worst, by far, at a grand total of 225. Because I spun out the first lap, you'll see the little bit towards the 40, 40, 50 minute mark. I uh, I hit the wall pretty hard. Um, around lap two, it was better. I liked it better. I liked the way it drove and stuff like that. Um, I think I drove it a little bit harder, but we'll see. Still not 100% used to the controls, still, mainly because of the fact that, like, I've been away. From, like I said earlier, I was, I've been away from the game for so long. But I like it. didn't hit that one. That was like the third lap. 